In electronics, breadboards are great for prototyping smaller projects, since you can make electrical connections in no time with these jumper wires. It's really easy to experiment and be creative. But as soon as others get involved, the question, do you have schematics, pops up. This video will take you through a guided tour of the full schematics of my minimalistic 8-bit computer here. I drew them up using an electronics design package called KiCad. Since it was the first time for me using KiCad for a larger project, I reflect on my learning experience and point out a thing or two I found interesting, important or helpful. Let's have a look. I have downloaded and installed the latest version of KiCad from their website. It's a free and open source project, so that's great. You can download the project folder of my design from GitHub. Just click on the link in the video description below. Click on Clone. Then click on Download Zip. Extract the folder to a location of your liking and start KiCad. KiCad offers a full electronics design workflow, but we will only use the schematics layout editor. Click on File, Open Project and select the dot .profile in the folder you've just downloaded. Up here you can see the different modules of KiCad represented as icons. The main thing I wanted to be able to do with KiCad is to draw my schematics exactly the way I had built them on breadboards. That is, each module at a time. KiCad, and I'm sure similar packages as well, allows me to do exactly that by offering a feature called Hierarchical Schematics. The idea behind this is really similar to an object in C++ or Java, where on its outside you can only see the user interface. All the complexity of the implementation is hidden inside. That's the reason why my complete CPU system fits on this single page. In the center you can see the eight bus lines connecting all modules. And up here on the left we have the VGA card, which reads a character from the bus when activated by the terminal in control line here. On the right hand side you can see the A register feeding its output to the ALU. Below here we have the B register and as you can see the ALU also can output its content back to the bus. Down below here we have the program counter and on the left hand side the memory with its memory address register. Here in the middle on the left hand side we have the brains of our CPU, the control logic. The control logic reads in instructions from the bus, takes in the flags from the ALU and outputs all control signals and therefore is effectively coordinating the activities of all the other modules. Inputs and outputs of the functional blocks are shown as these yellowish labels here. We are protected from having to deal with the actual implementation of this A register here until we dare to double click on its schematics block. Ok, now we are one level deeper down the rabbit hole. We can see where the yellowish labels actually connect to real components. Here you can see the bus lines, for example connecting to this component here a 74HC245. We can go back to our top level schematics by clicking on this little red arrow symbol here. I found it really convenient to be able to organize the schematic in this hierarchical manner. When you browse through these schematics you will realize that most parts are pretty standard and easy to understand once you've taken a look inside the datasheets of the components but you might already have spotted a couple of not so straightforward features, since this design has also some carefully optimized aspects. We'll dive into them at a later time. Let me now just briefly point them out to you. Here is a little pop quiz. Just write in the comments what you think they are good for. Number 1. Have you noticed that down at the bottom all bus lines are tied to plus 5 volts uh, via 1k resistors. And what about bit 7? Up here. 
It is tied via this uh, silly 1K resistor to a control line. It's the inverted high control line. Can you make sense of that? Most control lines inside a module have these 10K pull-up resistors you can see up here. But some of them don't, like the control in. So why is that? And up here the Arduino is providing a couple of strange signals. They connect to control lines. Aren't they shortening out some of the important control signals? Well, more on that later, I guess. Sorry to leave you hanging here. Please let me know in the comments what you think about the schematics. Since I'm not an electronics expert, I really appreciate any constructive comments. And maybe someone with experience in PCB design wants to team up and work on a nice PCB layout. If so, drop me a line. And this is it for today. If you like my minimalistic CPU concept and find it educational, I would very much appreciate if you could link it to others so that we can get a little community going. Take care. Bye.